everybody there. Crypto Finder TV, hope you're all having a great day. Trader Cobb here, jump across to tradercobb.com, find out more stuff. I want to take you through a top 10 analysis right now because a few things have happened in the space, but what are they? Well, let's have a look at how it relates to the charts, but let's first touch base on what's happened. Facebook just recently, within the last 24 hours, has come out and said they'll lift the lid on the blanket crypto ban, which is great news for businesses like ours. It's still being shut out from what I understand for the ICO space, which is a good thing. They just don't want people being ripped off, but it may start to get more eyeballs back into crypto, which can only be a good thing. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll see if Facebook has a more sinister plan, which I'm sure they do. They've got the wonderful bad guy uh, act down pat right now. Obviously with all the bad news, their PR agency must be A, growing. Great time to get a job at Facebook if you're in damage control. And uh, B, they might just be planning the mother of all ICOs. Time will tell. Let's take you through the market and see what's actually going on when we look at the charts. Bitcoin, well, 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 What's we, what do we have here? Let's check this out. We can see, well, look, we did see this pull back into the cradle zone. I talk of the cradle zone, I teach this on my courses. Look, pulls back in, moves away, pulls back in, moves away, pulled back in, moved away. Now, there was no trading opportunity there per se for me or anyone that I work with, simply because we did have this support here. So we left that alone. People look at that and go, well, hang on, you missed out on a great opportunity. No, I didn't miss out on anything because if it's not there, if there was no trade, I didn't miss Jack. All right. So now what are we seeing? We're basically seeing Facebook. Facebook. We're basically seeing um, the old big dog Bitcoin sitting around and hovering around that $6,000 mark. We've not closed below, interestingly enough, but we're consolidating there. What I've drawn this line in down here for is so you can see on the most recent lows, we are divergent on this most recent low here. As price makes a lower low, the MACD has not. So that is divergence. It is taught over time. I don't expect you to understand straight away, but uh, it's something that you need to know if you're going to trade these strategies. Now, having a look through here, if we if we do check it out on the lower time frame, like the 12 hour, what we're seeing is a potential for a higher low here, uh, a bounce off of 6,000. It would be the logical place to see it, to be honest with you. We won't know that until we see a break up through here, which would make a higher high, representing a higher low here. If that was to be the case, the very first, very small and little significant move back to uptrend would be in play there, but right now not much more than that. Interestingly, yesterday we saw Ethereum uh, against it all dip a little bit further. We've got support at 359, 360 roughly, and uh, we've set a new lower low within this uh, within this trend. We are still flat uh, on the MACD there. If I show this to you and jump up onto the four hour here, I'll just drive this bad boy for you. You'll see we dip below these lows, very divergent there as well. So nothing there for me to be trading there on Ethereum, but we can see it starting to just sort of hold. I wouldn't suggest that there's anything really going on here other than a consolidation for the time being. Look, that can change quickly. Let's not forget it, let's be honest, right? Uh, Bitcoin Cash, BCH USD, again, moved back into that cradle zone, broke down. Really nice looking trend here, really nice looking chart. Um, it does look like, you know, pullback in 800 could be very much on the cards. If I add in some Fibonacci, another strategy that I, uh, I employ with my trading is a Fibonacci booster, where I use Fibonacci levels to look for entering trades. If we have a look here, the 50% Fib is roughly around that round number as well. So we do, do start to see a bit of a confluence of events occurring uh, in Bitcoin Cash. Still nothing there for me just yet as far as trading goes. Uh, we, have a, we have a higher low here potentially, won't be confirmed until we get the higher high and time will tell. Now, EOS did have a good day, the strongest performer out of the top 10. As we can see here, we are pretty extended on EOS. We did see a very big fall from grace on EOS uh, in the last few, well, in the last week or so. One of the biggest fallers, one of the worst performers uh, in and around mainnet launch. Go figure, huh? Uh, and you can see down here, support through here. We are approaching that, but for right now, we are extended once again. How do we find where it might pull back to? And I say might because trading is a game of probabilities. And you've got to start adding, um, like layering. You layer things together. It gives you a confluence of events. That's how I build my strategies that are literal checklists, guys. I tick things up, tick, tick, tick. Essential rules and bonus factors to make my decisions. So I try and keep it, well, I am objective, no subjectivity. You'll note there's no sloping trend lines on any of my charts either. There's a reason for that. They are subjective. Drop the trend lines, you'll do a lot better. Promise you that. Right, 
So back into nine dollars, back into this cradle zone, a pull back into that sixty-one percent fib on EOS. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for. There, I'm going to get rid of that fib because it's not really that. It's not pulling back too much just yet. Going to have a look at this four hour again. There's no real trading opportunities from my point of view. The way that I trade, there was a good support level back here. This is what I call the Bitcoin breakout trade. Uh, a really good run from that, obviously. And if anyone did take that stop, should probably be around about here now with this lower high. If the price does push up uh, and this becomes a high low that will be the higher high point at which point I would want to be out of that trade because the reason for being in a trade when that becomes invalidated that's where you want to get out and that's where you put your stop losses logic all right so moving right along Cardano let's check that bad boy out we can see here that downtrend is very much in play it's been very weak for a very long time Back in the cradle move, back in the cradle move. Got to the cradle, just consolidated though, and then moved. It does look extended, it does look likely for a pullback. If it was to continue to move lower, then it would need to, well then that would be a real sign of weakness on Cardano. Uh, it could happen right now, nothing for me personally to be trading. We are in this mid limbo land. Uh, we don't have a new lower low, we might have a high low. It's just not good enough for me. I look to trade only when there is what I call optimal chart structure. And we just don't have optimal chart structure right now. It's clean, smooth, flowing, trending charts. Clean, smooth, flowing, trending charts. That's what we need for optimal chart structure. I do a whole big chunk of that to teach people. It's very important. If you're not looking at, look, the thing is, opportunities present themselves in the right conditions. If the conditions aren't right, then there's no point in trading. It, it really is as simple as that. Traders need to manage our risk, keep the money we have. Without currency, we, we don't have a business. Just like if you're selling cars, if you don't have cars, you can't sell any cars. So our business, our currency is literally currency. Uh, if we don't have money, we can't trade and the business is, business is dead. So therefore it's ab of, ab of absolute utmost importance for us to hang on to the beans that we have. Okie doke. Righto, back to, or to Lumen. Again, look, we are extended. We've got to get back into these moving averages. Note this, ladies and gentlemen. Overextension from the averages, I talk about the cradle zone, the area in and around the 10 and 20 period moving average. When it pulls back into this region, we very often see a move. But when we get away from it, it does pull back, get away, pull back, get away, pull back, get away. Two things will happen. We'll either pull back in or we'll consolidate and let the moving averages catch up. Time will tell, but right now we are not in that zone on Lumen. And if we look at the four hour, once again, we're in limbo land. I'm not interested in trading uh, on Lumen at this stage. We need to see these trends continue. Neo has been weak for a long time, remains weak. It is a little extended, but it is convergent on this daily time frame. Look at this for a sweet lemonade. Pull back in, bearish candle, whooshka, happy days. That is an absolute doozy. I'll tell you a little story about that. Uh, I've got a rule that states, trade what you see, not what you think. Uh, I had my office soundproofed uh, a few weeks back, right around this time, and I took that sign down. Well, they took it down, didn't put it back up. I thought about this trade, I left that trade. You know why I left that trade? Because I thought Bitcoin might recover and therefore Neo would. Don't trade what you think, ladies and gentlemen. That is my honest admission of a mistake. I did videos on that on my market view. All my clients know. I shared it on my podcast, the Trader Cup Crypto Show. I, I needed to let people know because that's how I learn. That's how I become better. That was an absolute doozy with trade, but I left it because I thought, yep, opportunity cost big time. But we live, we learn, we move on, and I am human. So there'll be more mistakes, just not so many. Well, I don't make that many. It's just this one is a reoccurring one. Every couple of years I make it. I don't like to make any mistakes. Neo, very much the same as many of these markets. Pretty ugly. Uh, yes, we are back in that cradle zone, but no, it's not something that I'm interested in trading right now. Across the top 10 very much, so it is about waiting to see what the next move is. If we look at IOTA, we're below um, the support level, but again, consolidating, very messy, ugly charts. Let's have a look at this on the four hour. You don't wanna be trading throughout these periods. You don't wanna be trading throughout these periods. You wanna be trading throughout these periods. And we've got nice, smooth, flowing, trending charts. IOTA hasn't had that for quite some time. It's been relatively untradable if you trade structured.
and optimal chart structure. Ripple sitting down on the support. Notice this, right? This is very much the same sort of level as what we saw on Bitcoin at the 65.50 level. Uh, Ripple is sitting down on that, on its hunches. It's convergent on the chart, which is good for the downtrend. But we have support and we are a bit extended from the moving averages. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the market pull back a little bit. And on to Litecoin. Litecoin's been very weak. One of my favorite for looking for opportunities short. I was really hoping to get one back in this 109 level. Why? Look at how this support has been so strong. I really wanted to see it go bam, back in and then get short. Didn't get the opportunity, didn't get the short. Now I sit back, now I wait. Convergence on the charts, let's draw in the fibs, let's see where it could pull back to. A likely level in and around that $90 mark. Somewhere in there would be a lovely place to look for opportunities for shorts, for crypto cradle trades, Bitcoin breakouts, that sort of thing, the sort of strategy, strategies that I employ. Again, on the four hour, not looking so good there. So to wrap that up, ladies and gentlemen, the top 10 right now is doing this. It's scratching its head. It's saying, where to next? It's looking for guidance. It's looking for something to happen. Now, will we see it bounce? Look, it looks highly likely that we may see a pullback up into those averages. If we consider where we are on the charts, on the daily, we are a bit extended. Bitcoin, not so much. But you can note, right, look, when we get away from the averages, we pull back in, away, we pull back in, we've moved away and we're just sort of grinding. Like I said, one of two things will happen. We'll consolidate uh, and the moving averages will catch up or we'll pull back into those averages. This is just a force of the markets. It will happen again and again and again. So what's really interesting, what's really important is to see how we react to $6,000. What we do over the next few days will be important and will decide the likely direction for the next few days. I, myself personally, am sitting on my hands for the time being, keeping the money that I have and looking for trading opportunities in other areas. Yes, I still do my top 100 scan for my live trading floor and my VIP clients every single day because we're looking for opportunity. We're looking for good, strong trends and for trades within those trends. But for now, across the top 10, ladies and gentlemen, there ain't too much to sing and dance about. I hope this has been beneficial. I hope you're enjoying Crypto TV. Sorry, CryptoFinder.tv. Have a great day and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye for now. What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Crypto Finder TV from the editors and analysts of Finder.com, where we're going to help you change your life and make better financial decisions. I'm Fred Chibester, co-founder of Finder, and I'm inviting you to join me on Crypto Finder TV right now. Come and subscribe, where we're going to teach you more about cryptocurrency and have a lot of fun along the way. Subscribe for daily videos and live streams where you can learn about technical analysis and tutorials. What is actually going on right now? Tell us. What's everyone saying? What's the sentiment you're getting from your channels? What is the buy zone? Wow, look at Tron. Breaking news that actually affects coin prices. Sentiment and price predictions. Blockchain and ICO developments. Plus, special guests, executives, and real world traders that give you actionable insights without all the BS and blah, blah, blah around cryptocurrency. Subscribe, do it right now. <laughs> Have a genuine fun. Subscribe!